Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to How to Lose a Chess. This is a series on this channel where you all bravely send me your chess games. And we laugh, we cry, we analyze them for their incredible brilliancies and catastrophic blunders. Sit back, relax. What you are about to witness is a up, 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 <laughs> battle between two 400 ELO players in the chess.com rapid pool. And before I show you this game, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Incogni. Folks, it's 2023. And just like our chess games, basically everything is moving online. Whether you realize it or not, we put our data into websites constantly from account signups to checkout pages. More often than not, that data stays safe, but sometimes hackers get in and data breaches occur. Other times, if it's not hackers, companies will literally sell their data to data brokers. Data brokers then take all of that data and might give it to somebody else who's willing to pay a nice price. Now, the smallest inconvenience of this is like a telemarketing call or targeted advertising, but there are much bigger problems with our information just floating around out there. Like somebody could take out a credit card in your name, for example. And this is why Incogni is awesome. Incogni fights on your behalf to scrub your information from the places on the internet that you don't want it. And they will also fight these data brokers as well. Incogni works in three simple steps. Number one, you just sign up for your account. Number two, you grant Incogni the right to fight against all of these entities on your behalf. And number three, you sit back and watch. They will take on data brokers and any website where your data has been breached or sold to so that it gets off the internet. As the world gets more borderless and online than we could have ever imagined, I would love to see governments protect the data of their citizens. But until we get to that point, services like Incogni are really great. My friends, you know how this works already. If you're interested in Incogni, click the link in the description. The first 100 of you will get 60% off your Incogni subscription. Now that you're done protecting your data online, let's get back to the video. Thanks, sponsored Gotham, my friends. Our protagonist is Michael. Michael is Canadian. And his opponent is Anuraj from India. Both of these players played a lot of chess in 2022, but I actually checked their accounts and neither one of them has logged into chess.com since the middle of last year, 2022, as I just said. So hopefully one day they see this, one of their friends send, sends this to one of them and goes, was this you? And then brings them back. And if not, well, they left their imprint on the chess world forever. Also, speaking of Canada, I'm going to have a fan event in Toronto December 7th. If you don't know about it, link will be in the description. Uh, I look forward to all of you uh, Canadians, Torontoans, E4. Michael opens the game with pawn to E4 and Anuraj plays E5. Now, my friends, I'd like you to take a good hard look at the position. Sit back, take a sip of your coffee, put your feet up, you know, or however you like to watch chess content. Because this is the last time anything normal happens. <laughs> By the way, I got nice socks. I don't have a sock sponsor. Do, do I have a hole? Oh my god, a hole is like forming in the sock. I don't have a sock sponsor, but maybe, maybe I should. All right, so yeah, what you're about to witness, um, th this, is, th this is just about where the good stuff stops. Um, Michael plays bishop c4. That's obviously not a terrible move. Uh, there's nothing wrong with bishop c4, but he didn't play bishop c4 because he was like, oh, I'm supposed to develop my knights in my, in, in, in all my... No, no, he, he did that because he's trying to four-move checkmate his opponent. Now, you all know the depths of 400 ELO. You know that this is the way it goes. Somebody learns four-move checkmate in a YouTube short or a TikTok or an Instagram reel, and then they try to play it on chess.com. By the way, if you're trying to scholars mate anybody, like, just play queen h5, okay? Just play queen h5. Um... Now, black plays uh, c6, queen f3, and now does, in fact, prevent four-move checkmate by losing the center pawn. Now, it's very clear that Anuraj played c6, which does not traditionally... Yeah, the, the knight is supposed to go there, um, but he's trying to play d5, and, and he will not be deterred about playing his move d5, even if it is completely losing a pawn, Right? Now, Michael here is not a greedy man. He's a Canadian man. He pays a lot of taxes. So rather than taking from the government, he gives to the government and he plays bishop to b3. Now, maybe Michael was setting a trap. Michael could have been an evil genius. The point is that if black takes on e4, it's mate on f7, which, let it be known, is like very possible at this level. I mean, again, black just moved that. So you would think that, again, he would play... Uh, he, he would take because he just but no 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 knight f6 oh 
Oh. Okay, not... <laughs> I don't know why we went that way. Uh, no amount of YouTube shorts or tutorials tell you to ever put the knight on h6. None. But Adaraj is a genius. He is overprotecting the pawn on f7. Let's not forget the most traditional developing square for the knight actually does, in fact, block the attack and safeguard the center and even creates a threat. But Anuraj does things his own way and plays knight to h6. Not the world's dumbest move. Definitely not. A completely reasonable move. Now at this point, Michael uh, should develop his knight or develop his knight or play in the center. And he does play in the center, kind of, with the move c4. Michael's idea here with c4 was to reopen his bishop and threaten checkmate on f7, which it isn't because Anuraj just played knight h6. But again, you know, I, I imagine Michael probably thinks that he's going to take the knight and then checkmate Anuraj. I, again, no idea, haven't spoken to the guys. Knight to h6 played c4 with the brilliant idea of reopening the bishop to see the f7 square. Because, yes, chess has existed for like 8,000 years, but why not try to win every chess game in five moves to feel better, right? Like that, right, obviously, you know, we just, we gotta win in five moves, there's no other way. D takes c4 played by Anarash. This move no longer blunders checkmate because that's defended and because white blocked his own bishop. Queen takes e4. Now, in, in chess, you have to think, when a piece arrives on a square, an opponent's piece, you gotta think, what does it see? That queen sees this pawn, this pawn, and this pawn. Now, it's only attacking one of them, which is this. But Anuraj is rated 410, and at 410, the brain does not do all of that extra nonsense. The brain goes, me see queen, me attack queen. Because that's just how you play chess when you're 400. You're like, it's a queen, I gotta attack it. Like, I got no... You know, it's like why I don't let my dog off leash. You know, you see these people walking their dogs with no dog leash on New York City streets. I think those people are complete degenerates. Like, I think if you walk your dog in a city with no leash, you're a scumbag. You're a terrible human being. Now, if you go out on a farm somewhere, there's a big forest, it's just you, you know, you're just hanging out, your dog, dog goes running off in the woods, no problem. Crowded city, you're an idiot, a scumbag, and a menace to society. That's all to say, Anarash is none of those things, but 400s play chess like idiots, scumbags, thieves. You know, they, 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 they just, they, they just, they just like see stuff. They just want to do it. They just, oh, I got to take, queen takes c5. Anarash could have predicted that that move was going to happen, but instead he attacked the queen and now he blocks. Okay, now something really funny happens. Both of these guys, they just allow the queens to have a staring contest. Now, there, there is nothing sophisticated about the position. White is just a pawn up. Back to basics. White should trade queens, develop his knight and castle, then take the center, develop his other knight, and develop the bishop. Like, you guys know this. You all have this knowledge in your brain. You just have really bad habits. No self-control whatsoever. You're all extremely lazy. You just want immediate results with no work. D4, though. Having said that, D D4. A lot, lot of credit for this move. D4. Excellent move. Played in 14 seconds. Defending his queen. Anuraj now plays knight f7. Look at that. Rerouting his knight, targeting the queen, right? And now Michael saw this, and he played queen take. <laughs> okay, like I said, both guys just like, nobody wants to trade the queen. Nobody. Like, they're just staring at each other. Okay? Now the knight goes... <laughs> Anuraj did not like his move. He undoes his move rather than, you know, developing a piece like knight d7 or bishop b6. Again, it's tough. Like, black is worse no matter what black does. Uh, but okay, knight h6. Now Michael, again, should play knight c3, knight, knight, knight f3, maybe trade the queen, maybe, you know. Instead, Michael plays the ultra sophisticated. You guys don't have a high enough IQ to understand this move by Michael. C5! Opening up his bishop! Look at this! Look at this sophisticated positional move by the 400 rated Grandmaster, securing control of the d6 square, looking for a potential knight d2, knight c4, knight d6 infiltration. Fantastic stuff. Now Anuraj decides, I don't want to attack the queen from this side, I'm gonna attack the queen from g4. And finally, Michael has had enough. He is only able to prolong his staring contest with the queen by sliding back, but instead of that, he trades the queens, and life is good, and now it is time for him to develop the rest of his pieces. Knight to f3, beautiful, beautiful. You don't need to overcomplicate things. Now at this point, I am willing to make a bet that something very funny happened. In this position, Anuraj went like this. 
Did you did you see that? Did, did you understand that? So Anuraj was playing the game and he went like this. What's he trying? He's trying to castle, right? It's not letting him. Why not? Cause the bishop. Ah. So Anuraj goes. <laughs> <laughs> you understand how the 400 elo brain works? The 400 elo brain is like, oh, I can't castle? Well, ooga booga, I'll just put the rook on the square. That I, I basically castle. I, I basically, I basically castle. I got the rook there. All right, the king's in the center. doesn't really matter. The rook's on f8. <laughs> but that's not the point. <laughs> that's not why people do it. They, they, they do it to, they, you castle to save the king. So instead of that, Black probably should have castled that way, but okay, he plays Rook F8, right? It took him six seconds, he plays Rook F8. I don't have any evidence of this whatsoever. Anuraj might have absolutely, he might have known, but you know, anyway. Now, Michael here, very disrespectful, rubs it in his opponent's face. Took him two seconds to castle, excellent stuff. Michael, light bulb on, I got a castle, excellent stuff. And not only do I have to castle, here Michael accidentally plays his best move of the game, by far. Black has just played the move b6, looking to make a pawn trade because, well, you're 400. I mean, thank God you haven't blundered another piece. Um, and also trying to open up the rook. Now, Michael here plays rookie one. Now, rookie one, make no mistake whatsoever, he did not see that Black can take that pawn. He, he did not see it. I don't, I'll take that to my grave. But he pinned the bishop to the king. And you'll notice all of Michael's previous moves, every single one of them, this one, this one, and this one all activate a piece. They all brought another piece to the party. Sometimes chess is really that simple. The more goons you have, the better the fight is gonna be, all right? Peaky blinder style. You bring 10 guys to a fight, it's gonna be a good fight for the 10 guys. Unless they take on 15 guys, all right? B takes Eva. Ladies, you, you're welcome as well. I just figured you wouldn't wanna fight, all right? Bishop to it. What? So black takes and Michael does not take the pawn back, which is why I'm arguing he had absolutely no idea the level of genius of rookie one. Instead, Michael doesn't take here and plays bishop a4, creating a threat against the defended pawn. That's very interesting. We got to unpack that. Now, white is still better. White is still better because black's army is just asleep. He's not going to castle anytime soon. White's going to put some serious pressure with this pin. Well, White's not going to do anything, but the computer thinks of those moves. Now, at this point, seeing as though Anuraj just took one pawn, he takes another pawn. But again, my friends, I urge you to think how a trade benefits you or your opponent. This trade is not, it's not a good trade for black because now white's knight is transferred into the position and creates multiple threats. One is a threat, the other is a target. So be very careful with this type of stuff because now that the knight has arrived here, it attacks that pawn with the bishop. So actually Michael's little gambit here with bishop a4 pays off. And of course, black should play bishop to d7, defending that pawn and also blocking the pin. Instead of that, Anuraj saw that the knight targeted the pawn, which is defended twice, but just for good measure, he moved it out of danger. So he invited white's knight to ravage his position, and now it's really bad. First of all, first of all, if you take with the knight, you walk directly into a fork. However, it's even worse than that. Because if you go here to stop all of that, this is mate. Oops. So Black, believe it or not, who had no idea what he was getting himself into here, played the top computer move. Stockfish basically says, I'm dead. There's nothing I can do. If I defend against mate, but knight takes e7 is devastating, and then white will come out and win the rook anyway. So white's going to win no matter what. So actually, after f4, which is a crazy blunder, losing the rook with knight c6 and bishop a8 is the best path of action. Okay, so Michael has actually played a very, very decent game of chess. Very good game. Okay. Um, he is up six points of material. He is up a rook and a pawn. Very easy to win this now. Get the, get the rest of the pieces out and make some trades. Trade the bishop for the knight. 
Make sure your king is not back rank checkmated. Always make sure somehow you get some back rank exposure. King f7, and that move attacks the bishop, so let's save the bishop. Okay, very nice, excellent. Oh my god. Black, he's, he lost the bishop. Bishop takes his check, and now he lost the knight as well. Black is about to be down 12 points of material. But I think Michael, Michael felt bad. Michael's a Canadian. They're nice. Bishop d5, bishop b6. And Michael decided, you know what? Instead of taking with the bishop to eat all of these pieces, I'm going to take with the rook. So Michael spots that. He has played a great game, all things considered, for somebody with a measly little 400 rating who's supposed to be barfing and, and pooping all over the place when they play a game of chess, okay? But he, he did a good job. And, and now he just has to avoid back rank checkmate. For example, rook d8... Uh, bishop e4, rook d1. Like, like, that is a way you lose, right? You get back rank checkmated. So, rook e6, king to e8. If I'm playing white here, I don't chase the king. I develop, I develop. I might kick the knight out. Just kick the knight out, make it go away. Get all the pieces out, and let's see. Bishop d2, great! And there is a pin. So, bishop b4, pp on the pp. Put pressure on the pin piece. Devastating stuff h5 that's bishop b4 bishop b4 is game over and after bishop to b4 let's say black goes here you just trade and let me tell you you are not going to lose to a knight a knight can't back rank mate you all the knight can do is snuggle up to the king and give him a smooch all right so instead of that h5 he plays knight not look at michael expert technique expert technique but my friends you are watching how to lose a chess in every one of these games a series of some of the dumbest moves humanly possible will occur. And I am very delighted to inform you that we have arrived at that moment in this game. What you are about to witness will shock you. Viewer discretion is advised. And if you have children watching, you might want to cover their line of sight. Black plays king to d7. A natural move, because frankly speaking, you don't have many pieces remaining. You'd like to move your bishop, but you can't. Now white, who has just developed a couple of pieces, will of course bring his rook to the party. Okay, I will allow that move because you are galloping to take another pawn and you are just bringing the knight closer to the king. Remember, you are up a rook. Remember, when you are up a certain piece of material, you should use it, okay? All right, if you buy a really fancy computer or you buy a really fancy anything and you just keep it locked away, I mean, I guess you have it, but I don't know. Go bring it outside or something. Rook e1, rook d1, rook c1, right? Black plays bishop c5. All right, black is actually creating a couple of threats. White plays h3. Don't hate that move. Don't hate that move at all. Now black probably has to take with the knight or black has to go back. What does black choose to do? Oh no. Oh no. So the pawn attacks the knight. The knight guards the bishop. So white should slide the king over and Michael does. Now the knight is hanging and when it moves, the bishop will be taken. And if the bishop moves, the knight will be taken. Oh my goodness. Anuraj is quickly running out of pieces. This is really, really bad. And he proceeds in this position to play rook to f5. He is busted up. But now, in every game of chess, your rating is determined by the amount of good moves and bad moves you will make and the amount of good moves and bad moves your opponents will make. Michael has played this game like an 800, maybe more. Now, it's time to play like a zero. Rook f5 attacks the bishop. The knight is hanging, and so is the bishop after. The best move for white is to give a check, defended by that knight you moved, then take the knight, which attacks the rook, and then take the bishop, and at the end of the day, you will emerge, well, there's even a fork, up a lot of material. That doesn't happen. Rook f5, Michael gets scared, and he blunders. Instead of this, he blunders his rook. He loses the rook on e6. Michael is still completely winning because if he takes the knight, he then gets the bishop or the rook. 
Instead, out of inertia, he gives a check. The check is not the worst thing in the world because once again, I repeat, he can take the knight and then the bishop. Michael panics, plays rook to c1, defending his bishop but losing his knight. He is losing his knight, but I repeat, it is not the end of the world because he can take the knight attacking the rook. Whoops, he'll take the knight attacking the rook and still taking the bishop. Instead of that, black plays rook to e5, re-blundering the knight for like the sixth move in a row. Michael, in this position, instead of taking the knight, which now would no longer attack the rook, but would still attack the bishop, Michael plays bishop. Okay, we give a check to the black king, which now is basically drawn closer to the knight. And he takes it, which is still not the end of the story because Michael can take the knight and then take the bishop. Michael is still winning, but in this position, Michael plays bishop to a5 check, and for the first time in nearly 20 moves, Michael is not better because he has lost his bishop, but I, Im I, I remind you, it is not over because Michael can still take the knight and attack the bishop. Black goes back to d6 instead of taking the bishop. He doesn't realize. Michael also now can give a check and recapture that knight. He does bishop b4. The king goes to e6, and for the 10th move, literally in a row, the knight is still hanging. Instead of taking the knight, Michael plays rook to d1, which now enables the knight to move for the first time in 10 moves. And this move wins a rook. But instead of that, instead of moving his knight to e3, or moving his knight back, or moving the bishop which would be hanging after the knight was captured, Anurash played the move which roared across the land, which shook the mountains, which raised the levels of the ocean, kind of like global warming. And Lightning struck across the globe in this position. Anuraj played Rook to e2, blundering the rook for no reason whatsoever. Rook to e2 hangs the rook completely, unprompted, no reason at all. Rook to e2, he wasn't satisfied losing his knight or his bishop. He decided to lose the most valuable piece that he had remaining in his position. Here, Michael, spoiled for choice of taking the knight for the 100th move in a row or taking the rook, played something even better. Pawn to g3, a move that if you paid me thousands of dollars, I would not be able to, I would not begin to be able to explain to you. And yet, Michael is still winning because even if this pawn was captured, the knight is still hanging and so is the rook. In this position, Anuraj played the very cunning f3, setting up a very puzzling situation for Michael. He can now no longer take the rook. He can take the knight for the 15th hundredth move in a row. He can also take the pawn, re-attacking the rook, re-attacking the knight. But instead of that, he gave the mysterious check on d7. Black triumphantly marched the king into the center of the board. Michael can take the knight. He can take the he, he can he can he can take the knight. He can go after the pawn on f3 again, but instead he gives another check, daring the king to walk forward. And he does. The king is coming down to e4. In this position, the only winning move now is bishop to c6 check, which would remove the anchor of the pawn. You could still capture the knight. But here, a move sequence that only the smartest chess players in the world can understand occurs. Michael plays rook to d4. And for the first time in the entire game, he is completely lost because the bishop can take. And then black will swarm. But instead of that, black played king to e3, finishing the king's journey all the way down the board, creating a peace cube and threatening a checkmate which Michael did not see. I will remind you, Michael played pawn to h3 on the 25th move of the game, and the entire game happened without him taking the knight. And after he did not take the knight until the 38th move of the game, it is now knight to h2, the ultimate anime plot twist which will end Michael's run, and he will lose the game. But that's not the only checkmate. Anuraj can also play this. Wait, 
Wait, that's not checkmate at all, because the bishop can take. But as fate would have it, Anuraj would come to his senses in this position and realize that was not checkmate, but his immortal knight on g4 can, in fact, deliver not just checkmate, it's also the only remaining check in the position for black. And I regret to inform you, my friends, that in this position on the 39th move of the game, Anuraj took the bishop back and blundered his own checkmate in one move. And Michael won.